Hey, this is the Swedish Guitar Nerd, and today I'm gonna demo an amp. It's this Black Star HT5. It's not the latest version of the HT5, this is uh, actually the first version of it. Uh, some things have changed, uh, but yeah, I'll go through all the... As usual, I'll talk a lot, I'll go through all the features. Um, yeah, it's the, the cheapest uh, tube amp they have, and it's one of the cheaper, actually, tube combos you can get at the moment uh, by a big company. Uh, Black Star, by the way, uh, is created by people that used to work at Marshall, so... Yeah, if you like Marshall, then yeah, you probably like this. Um, yeah, so this is, uh, and they are based in England, of course, uh, but this is their, the HT line is made in the Far East. This one is made in Korea, and they moved their production to China. So I'd say this one is probably better, uh, based on my experiences with Chinese gear. And um, yeah. Something else that's different, this one has a 10-inch Celestian speaker, actually. And the new ones have a 12-inch speaker that's a no-name made in, yeah, made in Asia as well. It's not no-name, it says Black Star something, Diamond, I don't remember. Um, so I'd say this is better even here, even if this is a 10-inch speaker, I'd say it's quite surely better than the 12 inch from black store um yeah other than that it's pretty similar you have uh, two channels a clean and override channel uh, you have a shared eq it's a bass treble and middle and then you have the isf the infinite shape feature that black star is um, yeah Kind of making a big deal out of, I'll go through that as well. Um, yeah, you have an effects loop, that's nice, and you have uh, the options of two uh, levels for the effects loop even, so you can use it with pedals or rack gear. And you have, uh, in this one, you have a shared uh, output for headphones or uh, speaker emulation. In the new ones, those are separate, so that's actually an improvement over this one and in the new ones you have a, a separate input for like an mp3 like a line in input basically yeah and finally you can uh, attach yeah extension cabinets for this one uh, it runs either uh, a single 8 ohm cabinet or two uh, 16 ohm so, you can basically drive a whole stack with this one. Wonder what that would sound like if I owned one. Um, okay, so yeah. Uh, it's a tube amp uh, and it uses only two tubes. Uh, in the preamp section we have a 12AX7. And that's usually where most of the... Uh, I don't know, most of the overdrive at least in amps come from the preamp section usually. and. So it is in this case as well. And you wonder if you only have one tube, how is that possible? Well, it's very possible because you have uh, other stages before that tube that are solid state. It's very simple. You can't really, because if you want just tube overdrive, uh, then you have, a, have to have several tubes like feeding into each other. So mostly, yeah, most amps have at least four of them to get proper overdrive and uh, this one has one so yeah it's a solid state tube hybrid i would say would they would never market it as that because that would be bad because everyone hates solid states for reasons i don't really get because i like solid states even more than tubes actually um but yeah that's how they do it so it's a 12 a 12ax7 or ec c83 as it's called it's that tube has several names and in the output section, they have uh, um, the the power tube is a BH twelve BH seven. Very unusual, actually. It's not many amps you find that one in. Um, 
I looked at it, and it, apparently they used this tube for TV screens back in the day when they had tubes in their TVs uh, to adjust the different parts of the screen. And uh, that's something they, I think they're using this tube for as well, that they get separate lines of information and that process is like next to each other. So what they do here is what they call a push-pull uh, amp configuration. So they use uh, the same amp, but they use, sorry, the same tube for getting separate uh, signals. So I think they like, yeah, it goes twice through the tube basically. And the idea behind that is that you're supposed to get a more, um, hmm. Something that sounds more like an, uh, like a pushed uh, output stage of a bigger amp or even uh, a smaller amp with high volume. Um, and now you can have it at a much lower volume. Well, that's the theory behind it. We'll see how it works. Um, yeah, it's a very solid amp. I've used it for a while and gigged with it. And, and yeah, I can only say good things about it. It's not that heavy. Which is also a good thing, and usually tube amps are really heavy, and this is very portable. And when it comes to loudness, because everyone is bothered by that, I've used this with a loud drummer with our problem. Um, so, yeah, it really works in the band situation as well. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna show you some sounds. Uh, I'm gonna start with the clean channel and uh, I have nothing in the effects loop. This is the amp clean basically and um, yeah, all the EQ sections are at 12 straight up. So everything is at 12. Even the ISF control is at like straight up. Um, so yeah, here's the clean sound. Okay, moving over to the overdrive channel. Um, yeah, I'm gonna start at uh, yeah, 12 o'clock at the gain setting here as well. So it'd be like halfway up. Uh, so yeah, you get to hear what that sounds like. Here we go.
Yeah, since this has an emulated speaker output as well, I thought we'd try that. And first we're going to use uh, the 1x12, since it's at two settings, you have a 1x12 or 4x12 emulation. We're going to start with a 1x12 emulation, so here it goes. <laughs> Yeah, and here's the 4x12 emulation. And before we turn the gate all the way up, uh, we're going to try the ISF knob as well. And I'm going to start with it at zero. And to me, this ISF thing is basically an extra EQ option. Uh, it's not like it's a tone knob, it's not a treble or bass or thing, something. It affects the entire spectrum of the EQ. So, yeah. Gives you completely different sounds of the amp, basically. And yeah, so here is at zero. Let's start off there. <laughs> Yep, and then we're going to turn it up like halfway, 12 o'clock. <laughs> Finally at uh, 10. Okay, now I backed off the ISF back to 12 again, and we're gonna turn the gain all the way up. See how that sounds. Here we go.
this has been the Swedish Guitar Nerd demoing the Blackstar HT5. And if you want something similar to this new now, it's the HT5C that's closest. You have the HT5R, I think, that has the reverb built in. Um, and that's something you I'll miss, at least in this amp. But of course, if you can cut the prices, that's fine. I'm using my own reverb through the effects, uh, effects loop, and that works just fine as well. Okay, thank you for watching. I hope this was helpful, and see you soon.